afternoon. Welcome everybody to our session on the European Master Programme on High Performance Computing. In this uh, session that will start with, uh, with presentations by a con the consortium that is going to implement a pan-European master program on HPC. We will, will be followed by a panel discussion, including some of the uh, uh, contributing universities, as well as additional partners, including our private partners from the European Technology Platform for High Performance Computing. And our first speaker will be the coordinator of this initiative, Pascal Bouvry, from the University of Luxembourg, who is the head of the Parallel Computing and Optimization Group, but also the CEO of LuxProvide, the organization that is operating and hosting Meluxina, one of our petascale systems. Please, Pascal. So thank you for so much for the introduction. It's really my, my pleasure to be here and also to uh, introduce you this, uh, I believe, important project, the EU Master for, for HPC. Um, yeah, so, so basically um, we, we try to be uh, as broad as possible in terms of, of bringing partners and we succeeded to have uh, 21 countries participating to this, uh, this project. Uh, the, the funding is uh, from the EU and from EuroHPC, 7 million euros over four years. Uh, the idea was not to, uh, to use this funding for very fancy things, but mostly targeting students and helping students for the mobility, helping uh, students for taking care of the tuition fees and, and so on, so that most of the consortium participants are, are providing also a, a lot of efforts in kind in, into this. For each of the country, the way we have been organizing it is that we have also a, a central contact point uh, that is helping to coordinate uh, information uh, across the, the country. Um, so the consortium partners are, are very wide. So we, we start with a, a core set of uh, awarding universities. So we will, you will have the presentation uh, right after. The idea was to find uh, different countries uh, different also specialities and different sizes, different country also with, in terms of, uh, um, let's say, hosting the petascale, hosting uh, different kind of solutions and, and so on. And then we've been extending this, so we have these eight awarding universities to, uh, I believe, uh, 38 other uh, participating universities. And, uh, and then um, the idea is also not to do this as a pure academic work where we, we do and have the, the students having the master and after that they go and check if there is any kind of need on, on the market. The idea has been to, to work from the beginning very closely with the industry, with the EuroHPC centers on defining what are, are the needs, on defining the curriculum and then uh, also on uh, bridging these two worlds from, from industry and from uh, research and academy in the, in the definition of the lectures, in the, the participation to the lectures and also to uh, uh, the, the internships that the students uh, will do. Uh, we, we got also a whole set of uh, supporting partners uh, that have been uh, really uh, helpful in, in providing input and uh, will be also helpf helpful in helping to, uh, to provide additional uh, information on how to build the right set of, of program. Because this is so, something that um, uh, is, is very uh, interesting for, for me in my heart, uh, that we are not just trying to make a, yet another Erasmus uh, program where we just plan exchanges of students and so on, but really working on, on the core on what is HPC. So basically building the, the, uh, the body of knowledge for, for HPC. Uh, this, uh, this conference is very nice uh, because we, we see that we have people uh, from coming from mathematics, from uh, other uh, fields of science, from computer science, and, and so on. And, and this diversity uh, should be also reflected uh, into our, our master. So it's, it's, for me, one of the main things is to define this uh, joint program and the, the core 
uh, evolving field of HPC. Uh, we, we got the presentations on quantum and, and so on. We see that it's not something that should be uh, defined forever, but something that is, uh, we see it as a, in a modular curriculum and also evolving curriculum over the years. So we target a full-fledged master, 120 ECTS. Uh, we have uh, as prototype uh, two cohorts of students, one uh, of 50 students to start already uh, this September, uh, and uh, another cohort of 100 students uh, starting in, in one year. As you understand that uh, we need to, to, um, to really work on the curriculum, the first cohort will already start with the existing uh, master programs, while the second cohort will be uh, really running on the newly uh, defined master. Um, so that's the, the, the target, as, as I mentioned, the defining this, uh, this program. Uh, implementing the, the program, we, we already start uh, advertising uh, it so the students can start to register. So with the um, EU Master for HPC and people can start registering there. Uh, already today. Uh, we'd like to uh, also uh, really take care of about this uh, uh, increasing the adoption of HPC by, by industry. Uh, I think that uh, it's, it's really the right time to, to, to think about democratizing HPC and having more and more impact on HPC. And when I keep repeating HPC, I really mean also HPDA and all the AI part, the ML part that is currently used also uh, around HPC. So that's the, the kind of thing that we'd like to do, and we'd like to do it also in, in a sustainable way. So I, I mentioned the term prototype, and I mentioned that term also that we have participating in universities. So the idea is really that this will go and, and spread and be the de facto standard, uh, the way we see it in terms of, of master, master degree uh, in HPC, so that uh, companies also, when they would hire uh, people, they would know what kind of knowledge this uh, a new set of, um, of, of uh, people who are holding the master uh, will have. Uh, this re requires a lot of work from all the different participants, and uh, we have these four different classes of participants, the world university, the participating universities, the supercomputing centers, and the, the industry and SMEs. So uh, all the, the current uh, supercomputing centers, for instance, part of the EuroHPC and network are, are part uh, of this, uh, this effort. So, um, in terms of, of governance, uh, we try to have uh, also an advisory board uh, where uh, we have uh, Jack Dongara, Brigitte Plateau, Albert Zomaya participating. Uh, special advisor for me who helped also uh, setting up this initiative, uh, Gilles Fouche and, and Vit uh, Vondrak. Um, but what is really uh, also interesting is that we have a general assembly where we have uh, all the participating universities, all our input, the students' input uh, when they, they will be on board, and so on. So it, it will be really a, a common effort. Um, one of the things also I need to, to highlight is that we really, really like to push for, for diversity, uh, gender balance, all kind of, let's say, uh, very nice way of of doing things. Uh, of course, we will be uh, uh, helped by, by the funding authority uh, to, to check that everything is in place. But for instance, for the selection of the students, the awarding university will not participate to the selection of the students. It will be done by, by the industry, by the participating universities, and, and so on. Um, so in terms of uh, academic journey, um, the way we, we define it, so it's uh, uh, Bologna kind of, uh, of um, uh, process so that we are based on different semester. The, the way we, we believe uh, we can do it is having the first year really working on the fundamentals. So bringing all the people with the same kind of, of knowledge after this first year. We'll have two kinds of input in terms of students for this first year, people coming from classical computer science uh, um, bachelor, but also people coming from uh, other scientific uh, bachelors. Uh, and then uh, after this, this first year, uh, there will be also a lot of uh, team events, summer schools, where again, not only the world universities are participating, but we are really looking really for, for input from the, the whole community. Then we have the second year of specialization. And, and the idea is uh, to look at what are the, already the existing specialties uh, per, per country, and, uh, and, and really to, to build on that. So, uh, uh, you will have the presentation of the different partners highlighting this, but you, you will see that some are, are more towards the 
I, I don't know, the, the hardware parts are more towards the, the mathematical parts, are more, more towards the scientific part, the system engineering part, system architecture, and so on. So it is very nice complementarity, and, and we should take advantage of having this uh, diversity also in, uh, in Europe. So this is represented uh, by uh, this uh, slide where you, you do have the, the two cohorts and uh, seeing that uh, in terms of uh, uh, specialities, so here I, I put one in data science AI, one in applied mathematics, one in computational science, one in uh, architecture performance, uh, computer architecture and performance engineering. So that's uh, the, the kind of uh, different outputs bringing a new set of uh, designers, software engineers, um, but also administrators for, for the new uh, machines and the future of HPC. Uh, we, go, we got, it's a very recent initiative, so we really uh, started uh, officially um, uh, 1st of, of January. This is a picture of the, the virtual kickoff that, that we had. I'm, I'm so glad, and I think everybody's enjoying here, to see that uh, we, we, we move really back to the real world, and we are not just a bunch of avatars, and, and that's also a, a real pleasure uh, to be here. Um, so now I will leave the, the hand to uh, uh, Maria Ribera Sancho from Universidad Politecnica de Catalonia to start presenting uh, one of the first uh, academic partners in uh, awarding university. Thank you, Pascal, for this overview of the consortium and the, uh, the master program. So the next speaker as has been announced, will be Maria Ribera Sancho, professor at the, at the University of Catalonia, but also the manager of the education and training unit at Barcelona Supercomputing Center. Please. Thank you very much for the introduction and uh, thank you for inviting me to present the role of UPC in this uh, interesting and engaging project. Uh, UPC stands for Universitat Politecnica de Catalunya, which is a public university located in, in Barcelona and is specialized in engineering and architecture study. It has almost 31,000 uh, students and they are distributed in 18 schools and, and nine campuses, right? Um, inside uh, UPC, uh, you can find the Barcelona School of Informatics, which is the center, the school uh, that is in charge of the uh, computer science, informatics, AI, uh, data engineering studies. They have three, um, three uh, bachelors and, uh, don't remember, don't see six masters now, right? Um, I must say that the main bachelor uh, that is uh, taught in this uh, school is the informatics uh, bachelor. And uh, it's relevant to say that a parallel programming and introduction to, to HPC is a mandatory subject in the curricula, in the bachelor curricula since 2008, so very early. And uh, between the, the masters that this school is, is teaching, that is the Master on Innovation and Research in Informatics, which is the one that is the basis for uh, this uh, uh, the European master, has a track on high performance computing since 2010, right? So why this school is, has been so committed with uh, HPC since the very beginning? So this is due mainly to the fact that uh, uh, they, have, they have a big and important computer architecture department that was strongly committed, together with UPC, uh, in the creation of Barcelona Supercomputing Center. So UPC is one of the owners, one of the patrons of Barcelona so Supercomputing Center. And so, uh, um, as such, uh, BSC will be able to highly contribute in the, in the master, and it's, uh, it's doing it, uh, providing materials, providing teaching, and, uh, and also providing internships to the students that can visit us, right? If you look at this uh, picture, you will see that uh, between the research personnel at BSC, there is a big part on the computer science department, uh, HPC architects, you know us uh, very well, but uh, this is not the majority of our uh, scientific staff. 
We have people working in uh, engineering applications of HPC, life sciences applications of HPC, or earth sciences applications of HPC. And I think that this is important for the master that that kind of students can come and, and make internships uh, with us. Okay. With respect to the specific role that the UPC has at the EU Master for HPC project, I must mention that we lead Work Package 2, which is the work package in which uh, we are expected to define uh, the HPC master curriculum in such a way that we expect them, we expect it to be a reference uh, in Europe. And what is also important, uh, we have taken the compromise to define it in a modular way, in such, in such a way that this can make easy or, or that might facilitate the use, total or partial, of our results in previously existing masters or in new masters. Additionally, uh, um, we will define, we are uh, devoted to define the master in such a way that responds to the skills and needs of the industry and all the stakeholders that uh, are interested on it. So I just want to show here some of the tasks that uh, already uh, that are already started in this work package. I must say explicitly what uh, Pascal has already said. There is a lot of people uh, implied in this master, not only the awarding universities, there are almost all partners that uh, are ready to contribute here. And we are starting with two tasks uh, that are coherent with our aim uh, to serve the stakeholders' needs, which are uh, the requirement, requirement solicitation from both the industry side and uh, the scientific side. And I think that Dirk from KTH will further explain how do we plan to, uh, to, to, to perform these, these two tasks. Uh, after that, uh, we will develop the structure of the master program and then a lot of consultations and a, and a lot of meetings and workshops will happen uh, to define the fundamentals that uh, Pascal has explained, but also the possible specializations that we identify and that we, will, that we want to develop. Finally, and of course, UPC is one of the awarding universities, so it's devoted to the implementation and the delivery of, of the pilot. In the first cohort, which is small, only 50 students, we will take as a basis our existing specialization in the Master of Innovation and Research uh, uh, master, uh, and we already, we almost have in place double degrees with FAO, Polymy, and Sorbonne, and others are coming. And our, stand, our starting point is the master that we already have there with two specializations, one in HPC architecture and the other one in parallel programming, right? So, uh, we can talk about that afterwards if you want. One of the first results of uh, the third task, uh, with, and in which we are analyzing the structure of our current masters and we are studying structures of other masters other than ours, uh, we are trying to understand uh, which are our disciplines and how complementary we are. Right? So this is a kind of resume in early stage, but it's one of the previous results that we already have. Right? So thank you. And that's all for UPC. Thank you, Maria, for this presentation. And I would like to immediately proceed with our next presenter, who is Harald Köstler, professor at the University of Erlangen, Nuremberg. Please. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for the invitation. So. I'm waiting a few seconds until the slides show up. Um, yeah, in principle, I will now introduce um, the FIU, so Friedrich Alexander Universität uh, Erlangen-Nürnberg. And um, this university uh, is one of the largest universities in Bavaria, so um, it's nearby. Uh, around uh, 120 kilometers or so, a little bit more, uh, south of Munich. Um, we were founded basically already 1743, 
And um, the special thing about FAU is that we are not a technical faculty, um, but we basically have, um, yeah, altogether five faculties uh, ranging from the technical faculty itself, uh, but also uh, to medical, uh, at, um, for example, fac faculty or um, also humanities, for example. So we have a bright, a broad uh, range of um, yeah, offers for the students. Um, currently, we have uh, more than 40,000 students altogether. Um, of course, um, over all five faculties, so we have um, between uh, yeah, 15 or uh, roughly 15 uh, at the technical faculty. This uh, varies a uh, little bit from year to year. And um, within the technical faculty, we have um, six departments. So uh, there is, besides the computer science, uh, where I am located in, and also um, this uh, study field, uh, computational engineering, where I will uh, go into some detail in a minute. We have also, for example, material science, um, or electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, um, and also a new um, yeah, department that is um, active in the medical engine, uh, engineering and AI um, yeah, area. Um, now uh, towards the HPC master, uh, the first cohort, as also already mentioned um, before, will be based uh, on our existing computational engineering master and bachelor uh, program. Um, so this program already exists um, yeah, roughly 25 years, so uh, 1997 uh, there was the uh, master started and I think two years later also the bachelor program started. Um, and the specific thing about this bachelor master program in computational engineering is that it was from the beginning designed uh, very internationally and also interdisciplinary. Um, so you see here at the bottom that basically it is um, containing parts uh, of mathematics, so especially, uh, of course, numerics, applied math, um, but also an application field that is obligatory for the students to take. Um, so here we have uh, altogether, I think, currently nine different application fields uh, coming, of course, from our departments of the technical faculty, but in addition to that, uh, the students can also, uh, for example, take uh, computational optics that comes uh, from um, yeah, the math and uh, physics um, faculty, um, and also things like me medical engineering or um, material science and so on, computational fluid dynamics. So it's a very broad range of application fields. And the third uh, pillar, of course, is the computer science. Um, as said, um, the master bachelor program itself is uh, hosted by the computer science department and uh, the other um, departments and faculties they contribute. So this is also very successful and maybe will also helpful for the uh, HPC master that we can integrate here uh, modules from um, different departments, different um, faculties, um, and we have some experience on that. So on the right, you see here our uh, yeah, big blue building where um, yeah, a big part of the computer science chairs um, are located in. Good. Um, then um, at FAU, we have a yeah, specialization also in HPC. Um, since last year, we uh, have uh, the Erlangen National High Performance Computing Center, NHR at FAU. Um, so this was uh, installed at um, several places in Germany and it's basically um, one tier beyond uh, our three big supercomputing centers. So Erlangen is now also part um, of this um, consortium and in uh, this context, we get now also a big new machine that we are currently um, yeah, installing and getting to run. Um, and then in addition to that, we also have um, at our university uh, yeah, a number of HPC-related research groups and also, of course, uh, courses for students. 
um, where we have a, a very uh, yeah, big focus on performance engineering and performance modeling, especially offered by the group of Professor Wellein. Um, then um, we, um, in our group, are especially interested in scalable algorithms. Um, but then we also have computer architecture, for example, and a bunch of applications. Um, besides that, we also have uh, a number of international collaborations, also within EuroHPC, several uh, projects we are involved. And finally, uh, here in the master uh, project, we, uh, FAU is the leader of the uh, implementation and delivery of the uh, prototype or pilot so work package four, and we have already started to work on that. So the application uh, is now already open. Uh, you can see here the link. And um, yeah, in uh, maybe one or two months when the application period ends, uh, we will then of course start the selection process such that we can get our first cohort ready for winter term 22-23. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you, Harald, for this presentation. And our next speaker will be Laura Grigori, who is a senior research scientist at the National Institute for Research in Digital Science and Technology in France, but also affiliated to Sorbonne and chair of the PACE Scientific Steering Committee. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. So I will be, I will be presenting uh, Sorbonne University uh, as an awarding university of this uh, master. Okay, so Sorbonne is one of the youngest European universities because it was, it was formed in 2018 by merging two very old universities. One is Paris Sorbonne in arts and humanities, and then the other one is Pierre and Marie Curie in sciences, engineering, and medicine. We have uh, 52,000 students, and uh, among those, more than 10,000 are international students. We have three faculties, humanities, medicine, and science and engineering. And uh, if we look precisely at science and engineering, we have uh, 18,000 students, 87 laboratories, uh, one engineering school, four marine stations, and so on. Uh, it's uh, located in the heart of Paris, so it's only 10 minutes walk from uh, Notre Dame Cathedral. And then in mathematics, we are also ranked third in the world uh, for 2021. And so I'll present now in more details uh, how we see our participation in this master. And so if we look at Sorbonne, I think our specificity is that we, we want to have a quite well-balanced master in between computer science and, and applied mathematics, and then with an opening towards uh, scientific applications, engineering applications. And uh, we already had a major in high-performance computing in master two in applied mathematics, and also we had uh, HPC courses in the computer science, and so now we are creating a track in HPC, which is really going to be the two masters, uh, computer science and mathematics. And so um, what we are doing is that for the master one, for example, we are going to have a very balanced curriculum in between math and computer science. If, if we look at math, uh, we are going to have courses in applied mathematics, numerical simulations, and then on the computer science part, we have parallel computing algorithms and architectures. And then to, for Master 2, we want to integrate um, multidiscipl multidisciplinary courses, which uh, will uh, include traditional HPC applications, uh, but also more recent ones like data analysis and quantum simulations. So students actually, in addition to having a double degree because of the mobility, they can also get from Sorbonne uh, a Master in Computer Science and a Master in uh, in uh, mathematics. And so in France also, this will also involve five other French universities, uh, which will participate uh, in different ways with, uh, with teaching in the master uh, and participating to the workshops, uh, etc. So we have a long-standing tradition actually at Sorbonne in, in high-performance scientific computing in both computer science 
and applied mathematics um, with, with many, many contributions to the high performance uh, computing field in terms of numerical methods, uh, in terms of algorithms. Uh, so in addition, our, our role in the project is um, we are in charge of a work package with the goal of promoting mobility of uh, students and, and teachers. And so there will be several different events. So there will be a summer school in 23 and uh, in 24. And so to the summer school, all the students will participate. Uh, so they will be together. So this will be like a team building event. Uh, then in addition, each uh, student will participate to, to two workshops, but those workshops are organized locally by, by each awarding university. And so for example, for the first workshop, they will discover uh, jobs in high performance computing. And then in the second uh, workshop, which will be during the master two, uh, they, will, they will get to know more research topics in, in high performance uh, computing. Uh, what else? Each student will participate to a challenge in, in master two. So they will be by groups of uh, five students. And uh, the topic of the challenge will be given by a supercomputing center or industry. And uh, it will be in part, in part, with the participation of, uh, of an academic partner. And of course, uh, all students will uh, do internships uh, in supercomputing centers, in industry, or in academic institutions, uh, but with a higher ratio of students going towards uh, industry and uh, supercomputing centers. Thank you. Thank you, Laura, very much uh, for also staying in time. And our next presenter will be Anna Poikova, full professor at the University of Sofia, and also head of the High Performance Computing Laboratory. Thank you. Thank you for this invitation. I am going to present uh, Sofia University, which is one of the eight universities awarding in this project. Uh, no. Which is the button? Oh. Hmm. Uh, okay. Maybe no. it's the wrong order. No, this is here. Yeah. Ah, okay. no. So yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, Sofia University is uh, the oldest university in Bulgaria. It is a very interesting uh, location at the university for all region because uh, uh, it has uh, teaching and research in both STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and humanities. So uh, actually uh, the program which we are going to put as a background for the further education of the students that would come to us is based on the long tradition of HPC research and teaching at Faculty of Physics and Faculty of Mathematics and Informatics, where over 3,800 bachelors and master's students uh, are currently participating. So, uh, this is uh, the way we see our participation in the program as a university which provides a specialization, which means the last two years will be very much attractive to the students at our university uh, because uh, Sofia University at the moment is the host of uh, distributed infrastructure in ICT where we study 
research and teach the students in artificial intelligence, distributed systems and mobile technologies. So in a sense, these three last programs which are mentioned here are master programs already running with a modular system and each module contains specific amount of HPC techniques. So in a sense, we have a program which is uh, quantum informatics, very new, one which is obviously one of the attraction point for the students in the region, uh, just because quantum computing is one of the techniques which are uh, very modern and very important for the students for the, for the future. In a sense, you can see that all these programs are very much dependent on HPC background. So for the students which are going to specialize in implementing HPC in physics, chemistry, biology, and genetics, which is very important at the moment, it is very uh, useful for them. So actually, uh, the Institute of Scientific Research in Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence, which is just running, and in fact, the very good news for the last two days was that ERC awarded the director of this institute with the 2021 Collaborative Grant for Artificial Intelligence, which is again another attraction part from the students because this is a, a, a demonstration that people who has uh, Sofia University as alma mater uh, are developing very well uh, in this field. Uh, so what is the role of the university? Actually, uh, we uh, are leading one of the packages which uh, should uh, provide a, a roadmap and we support uh, the other packages uh, just presented by Harald and Maria. So uh, what I see as a very important uh, task for us is uh, to develop recommendations and a roadmap and uh, develop an action plan to connect HPC courses to pilot program. That's it. Thank you very much for this overview. And our next speaker will represent the University of Lugano. This is Arian Eftekari. Advisor of Studies for the EU Master for HPC and Fellow of the Institute of Computing at the University of Lugano. Hi, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, so I am the study advisor uh, at uh, the Euro HPC Master's Program at Università della Svizzera Italiana. So that's uh, UZI, we call that for short. So UZI is uh, located in Lugano in Switzerland. Uh, it's in southern Switzerland. It's about two hours away from Zurich and one hour from Milan. Um, um, so I'm just going to go through some quick facts that are relevant uh, about UZI. So uh, last year there was 10,000 graduates. Uh, the Faculty of Informatics has about five research uh, institutes and 40 faculty professors. Um, relative to the size of the faculty and also the university, we've had uh, quite high success in attaining, securing competitive research funds for, uh, from European uh, organizations and industry alike. Um, the Master in Computational Science um, is highly supported by the, uh, uh, the research institutes in the Faculty of Informatics at UZI. Um, their students have uh, access to resources from ETH and the Swiss National Supercomputing Center, CSCS. Um, also, uh, students have a great degree of mobility because they have access to multiple uh, double degree programs. So, just as an overview of the Masters in Computational Science at UZI, the structure of it. So, it's a, it's a two-year two program. In the uh, first year, uh, students uh, uh, have an interdisciplinary education. 
uh, which covered topics on computer science, data science, and different application fields. Um, in this first year, students are taking communal courses, uh, uh, which generally focus on the fundamentals of computational science in the relevant fields. Uh, in the second year, um, students have a more focused and they can select the courses that they're interested in to have a focused uh, education, more specialized. Um, and th there, generally, the specializations are founded on high performance computing, numerics, and, and uh, AI. Um, of course, finally, at the end of this uh, program, they, they have to do uh, thesis projects, and upon completion of the thesis, um, they will finish the program. So the role of uh, Uzi in this European project, um, I guess, is to, uh, is to continue the leadership in AI and, and high-performance computing. Um, so th this, is, this includes a dissemination of, uh, of the knowledge base in their educational um, uh, programs. Uh, so there's two facets to this. On the, on the research side, there is uh, internal uh, and external uh, collaborate, collaborators which support projects for students and, and, and these projects generally speaking progress to being a master's thesis um, so it's very valuable for students to partake in these projects. Um, on the other side from an academic and uh, educational perspective we embed this knowledge base into the cu curriculum courseware and introduce advanced um, uh, summer schools and, and, and workshops on particular topics um, in addition to that, the, the courseware is also uh, spread out across different universities, for example, with ETH Zurich, and also students have access to shared courses that go beyond that with double degrees um, through different uh, European universities. So, yes. Should I move yeah. on? Okay. Thank you for this presentation. And I'll immediately move on to the next speaker to apply to whom. KTH, um, please. So I'm representing here KTH, and we're also very proud of being, say, part of this uh, project and, and uh, then also host of, uh, say, the upcoming uh, students. Now, like the other universities, we are, say, not starting from scratch when it comes to HPC education uh, as a a technical university uh, with, say, a little bit more than uh, 17,000 uh, students. Uh, KTH has actually quite a long track record in terms of educating students in the context of high performance uh, computing. And uh, one of the things which I think make KTH quite attractive is the, this very close proximity also to a number of groups in a similar way as also Harriet was explaining that for uh, Erlangen, which are, say, Domin uh, strong users of high performance computing resources in the area of biophysics, uh, in the area of CFD, or uh, quantum chemistry. We are at the same time also hosting one of the largest uh, HPC systems uh, within Sweden, so you have both the proximity to big computational scientists. Uh, groups as well as also to say infrastructure providers and this is also reflected in uh, say the educational program so we are uh, currently offering say education in high performance computing within uh, the scientific uh, uh, computer science specialization on scientific computing uh, and within this uh, program we have even say first a specialization in high performance computing on the one hand so that includes for instance also mandatory courses on parallel computing gpu programming uh, and optional courses uh, in the context for instance of advanced algorithms or artificial intelligence and on the other hand we have also this more stronger focus towards uh, computational sciences where you are then say closer to different uh, domain uh, fields uh, and then say numerical methods and algorithms uh, and their parallelization is of course then much more uh, say the focus then of this uh, specialization now Beyond, say, presenting what is, uh, say, the educational program at KTH, I also would like to use this uh, as an opportunity to present off, say, one of the early activities within this project. And uh, Maria already introduced earlier uh, the efforts towards a, uh, establishing, say, a joint uh, curriculum for a master in HPC. 
And the strategy which we uh, say follow here is to actually take as a starting point an analysis of what is actually the job market for the students uh, which are educated in this program um, and what are they are actually looking for. And we do that both for academic stakeholders and we do it particularly also for uh, the commercial stakeholders. And one of the first uh, things which we started here is to actually uh, reach out uh, to these stakeholders. Um, initially here through a survey, we also plan to have more uh, structural, uh, structured interviews um, to systematically collect uh, different kinds of job descriptions, which uh, say companies in Europe, uh, which are working in the field of high performance computing, uh, producing products in the field of high performance computing, offering services in uh, the field of high performance computing. Um, what are actually they are looking for, for what kind of education of, of uh, students. And that will be basically then the basis uh, for having then also a, a, a checklist if we say update then this curriculum. Um, do we cover all the topics uh, which is also, say, demanded on the uh, job market? So what we started to do there is we actually looked into, say, the advertisements as we found them at the beginning of, of this year. And on this basis, we uh, opened a survey and you find here in the QR code a link to that. So in particular, if you are from a commercial organization, you are very much invited uh, to uh, join uh, uh, this and, and to add your feedback through this uh, survey. We will additionally complement it also with a set of structured interviews so that we are also reaching out to, say, important uh, companies uh, here in Europe which are playing, say, a strong role so that we also collect uh, their feedback. So I would hope that you can here actually take already uh, today an active role within this project. And with that, I would hand over. Thank you for this, this very clear presentation. And our last speaker from academia in this session will be Katharine Salam Bruce, who will explain the role of the University of Luxembourg. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel, for the introduction. Uh, thanks, everyone. Um, yes, uh, as uh, Pascal mentioned it before, University of Luxembourg is uh, the coordinator of this project. Um, we are the youngest university in this consortium, the whole Europe, um, founded almost 20 years ago. Uh, and we are a research-oriented, interdisciplinary, international and multilingual university. We teach programs in uh, French and German, French and English, the three languages, and some of the programs are also taught in only English. Um, we are very close to European institutions, financial institutions, leading industry players. And we have three faculties, three campuses, and uh, three interdisciplinary centers. We, we have around 1,000 uh, staff, 250 professors, and 7,000 students. And we strive to provide high quality, interdisciplinary uh, teaching and learning programs. So the computer science department at our university has five master programs and the EU master for HPC pilot program will be built up on top of the master in information and computer science. This is a two years full time uh, program. Uh, in this uh, master, the students can specialize in four different uh, topics, artificial intelligence, communication system, information security, and reliable uh, software systems. And the students are um, early involved in uh, research projects via student uh, job positions, and they can also do master thesis uh, for industry, for companies. So our role in the project, we actually have two, two, two main roles. The first one at the project level is the coordination. Um, the coordination, the management, and the controlling, financial controlling, and communication and dissemination of all the activities and all the results of this project. 
We have set up a collaborative uh, work plan that is already in place, moving forward. Uh, we have a dedicated team internally um, for, for performing all these tasks. And um, we monitor all the project development. And at the master program level, we are one of the awarding universities. We contribute to the definition of the body of knowledge. Uh, we also contribute to the development of the new innovative educational content, uh, materials, and um, methodologies. And we support the implementation of the pilot program and also promote the mobility of students and teachers. So uh, with that, thank you very much uh, to Daniel, to the organizer for this opportunity to present the project and to all of you for uh, your time. Thank you very much. And with this, we are coming to our before I introduce the last speaker, I would also like to ask the discussion panel to already come on the stage and then move on to Jean-Philippe Nominé, who is HP High Performance Computing Strategic Collaboration Manager at the French Alternative Energies and Atomic Energy Commission, CEA, and also was a colleague for quite some time in the Research and Innovation Advisory Group of the EuroHPC joint undertaking. And this is something special for a master program that in this case we also have private partners, industrial partners, who give, provide a perhaps unique your opportunity to link academic education with the labor market and the requirements of industry. Please. Thank you, Daniel, and good morning, everybody. So I'm Jean-Philippe, I'm JP from CEA, like Daniel said, and I'm uh, uh, ATP for HPC, uh, Vice Chair for Research. And uh, together with my colleague Fabrizio Magugliani from ATP for HPC, uh, Stingward and E4 Computer Engineering Company, and we'll take part in the panel. We coordinate a, an ETP for HPC working group on education and training. So this is the reason why we, we contribute today to this nice workshop. Um, no, that's not, uh, voila. Um, so very briefly, some kind of overview or a reminder or update of uh, what ETP for HPC is. So we are basically uh, an association, a not-for-profit association, which is an industry-led think tank promoting European HPC. It's mostly focusing on research innovation. It's at the service of Europe's competitiveness at all levels, scientific, economic, etc., industrial. We have a strong focus on technologies uh, in the wider sense, and it's uh, hardware and software, we consider they are equally important. And hardware and software is very important to us. But we are more generally committed to developing a vibrant European HPC ecosystem all along the value chain, from technologies to application through infrastructure, etc. So we are private, independent, not for profit. As of now, we have approximately 110 members for more than 20 countries from, from Europe and international members as well. It's roughly one third of, or a small third of large companies, EU or international, one third of research organizations, or big third, and a big, big third of SMEs. And our members have very, very diverse profiles. Uh, you, you see that on the sort of lower like chart. We have vendors for sure, but also uh, I would say technology suppliers uh, from semiconductor companies to other kinds of building blocks, software companies, independent software vendors. We have service providers, we have a lot of research organizations, etc., etc., computing centers. And some, if not many, of our members have different hats. My organization, CERN in particular, is some kind of technology developer, sometimes code design supercomputer developer, infrastructure operator but also an advanced user of large applications, and we also develop applications. So we have many members who have different hats, and we are very happy not to be a, a technological, let's say, a hardware silo association. No, we really want to have uh, a strong technology component, but a wider vision, and through 
the wealth of our membership, we hope to be able to, to bring this kind of uh, uh, ecosystem development uh, momentum. So, um, you would find this all on our web pages, huh? so uh, we'll be very brief for that. Our main mission in production is the periodic uh, strategic research agenda, which is useful, hopefully, to EuroHPC through the RIAG advisory group Daniel mentioned, for instance. But we have other kind of activities and production, a number of working groups on different topics. Education and training is one of them. We produce those uh, strategic research agenda uh, every two years. Uh, a number five, one, already a fifth edition, is being prepared for mid-22, so it's, uh, it's on track. And we also have uh, a number of other productions like white papers, the list here is already uh, outdated. We have two, three more of them online. You can visit our website on different technical topics. We also produce the famous, <laughs> our best seller, uh, the European HPC Project Handbook, which is a nice, convenient, uh, uh, and regularly updated uh, catalog uh, of the European projects, now with all the new European uh, projects from EuroHPC. And we uh, also develop other uh, activities, such as a transcontinuum initiative, but please go to the website or come and meet me to, to discuss that if you are interested. And last but not least, we are um, a member of uh, EuroHPC joint undertaking and have representatives at the RIAG, free seats plus for observers. And we hope to resume RIAG activities very soon now, uh, in the coming days or weeks. So, why be concerned with education and training? Since we have really the concern of being a, an active contributor to the whole ecosystem development, for sure, education and training do matter. And no need to, 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 to make long speeches on that. I, I like to summarize it uh, sometimes by train, retrain, retain. It's very important to train people. Initial training is very important. This is our topic today with a EU Master for HPC. It's very important to take a wider perspective and vision. For us, it's really a lifelong process, and especially in those very rapidly evolving areas, such as HPC, to be able that people permanently can retrain themselves or acquire new knowledge, new skills, uh, keep on pace with the developments of methodologies and technologies. And we need to be attractive and to retain people. It doesn't need we want to to them to be locked in Europe, that they, they can circulate, they can come from other regions, they can go, go to other regions, but we really have to, to, to retain, attract a skilled workforce. Well, and for us, it's so very natural to take action in this area, and we like to summarize it in three points. Educate people to leveraging, maximizing existing technologies, that's a little bit more on the use side of HPC. Educate people to creating and designing new technologies and solutions. This is more ETP for HPC core business with all our technology provider uh, and, and, and similar members. And we consider also taking a, a wider, longer perspective. It's very important to capitalize and transfer existing knowledge uh, between generations uh, and to, 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 to have a longer vision of attracting, training younger people who would themselves attract and, and train younger, younger people in the longer term. So we are, I think we can bring value, added value to such uh, a, a project as a UMS for HPC because based on technology, hardware, software, we really have uh, a, a, a committed whole ecosystem vision. So to finish with that, uh, our more specific role in uh, EU Master for HPC and why we are uh, an active member, a, a beneficiary, a partner, uh, bringing in efforts from our office team plus a couple of our private members, two, two private members of ETP volunteered, uh, were very interested in participating in EU Master for HPC. It's Leonardo Company, large company, and uh, E4 Computer Engineering Company, uh, uh, SME. So those two members together with our ETP experts will try to contribute to two main activities uh, in UMSR for HPC. This is outreach and dissemination, and I would say both ways, more push mode, like promoting uh, the masters towards our members and the wider ecosystem. We have a quite strong and wide network for that. And pull mode would be more uh, connect the project and its student to companies uh, and create links, in particular with industry. 
for internship, mentorship, or whatever is relevant, useful for students. And in the definition of the curriculum, uh, with our expert, we will be to contribute ex ante to the needs and requirements analysis and exposed to the assessment and suggestion to improve the pilot curriculum. And I will personally uh, intend to, to follow and participate, I would say in kind, uh, to, to you, Master for HBC, together with my office uh, and industrial partners colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Jean-Philippe Nomine, for this contribution. And now I would like to use the remaining time to have a brief discussion on the curriculum on the overall program and with two additional guests among the panel. This is Elisa Molinari, who is a former member of the EuroHPC Research and Innovation Advisory Group, who has contributed to the debate and discussions in the, during the design of the call and the concept of the program and also Fabrizio Magugliari, <laughs> who represents our private partners and as uh, a member of E4. That was just mentioned by Jean-Philippe Nomini. Thank you very much for joining us today. And I, will, I would like to start the discussion perhaps with a, with a rather provocative question to Elisa Molinari, the member of the former Research Innovation Advisory Group. You have contributed and provided lots of feedback to our draft of this call text. Does the program as it presented now meet your expectations? And what is your comment? Uh, well, we will have to see. I think the enthusiasm and the work that people are putting in it are in going in the very much in the right direction. Um, and I think uh, one of the main efforts we have to make is to talk to the uh, young people and, and attract them into here. And, and, and just the main message is why one should take uh, now HPC as a, as a, a way, a path, uh, which I think is obvious maybe among ourselves, but not so obvious outside. So one point which I think will require our effort is there. The other comment that I would like to make is somewhat lateral, if you wish, with respect to the main uh, effort of the uh, awarding universities in this course. And this is that the world of people who use HPC uh, and, and need to be educated and may enlarge the pool of our, uh, of our young people and, and somehow provide people with the skills is much larger than, than this. It comes from the uh, people who graduate in mathematics, in, in, uh, the, who enter in a master in mathematics, in physics, in chemistry, in biology, and in many uh, other disciplines. And all these people, uh, um, uh, this is an, an enormous pool, and we all need people. We have a hard time in filling our postdoc positions, our te uh, technology positions, and so on. And it's really a waste if we have such a, a broader world of people who cannot be engaged and, and carried along with us in, into HPC. And I, let me also mention, because I was pretty shocked by these 20 male uh, poster presenters this morning on the stage, uh, and, and not, not a single woman there, let me also tell you that if we do that, we also have access to a pool of people where women are many more than in the, in, in the usual, uh, uh, in the usual uh, computer science curricula or uh, uh, computer engineering. So in a way, but they don't get into HPC sometimes and we have a barrier there. So I think we, one opportunity that I see in this uh, master is also offering and linking to all that work and maybe we need to support that as well uh, and, and foster this interaction between disciplines, which is, I've seen it started in many of the examples that were brought, but we can be, do more in that direction. And the RIAG was very enthusiastic also in that uh, push, which I think we have a chance now to, to also foster in our effort. Thank you very much for this comment. And now, in order to start the discussion a bit, so my 
maybe my first question to the panel would be uh, the the EU master for HPC is a pan-European master program, but there are, of course, this is not something completely new to have an international master program. And there are, for example, other EU programs, Erasmus Mundus is one of them, but also the master degrees offered by the European Institute of Innovation and Technology. So what is different in this program and why is this attractive to students? Stop. Maybe, uh, yes, uh, maybe to the academic partners who are responsible for most of the curriculum. Okay, so, so thank you for, for the great question. Um, in, in fact, um, the answer is, is now in our hands. And uh, like uh, Elisa mentioned, we, we need to, uh, to build and, and make it attractive. Uh, different uh, things are, are forcing, of course, uh, the fact that we have some openness to the fact that we are really going to, to work together on defining the body of knowledge for, for this, uh, this new master program. And also the thing that we are trying to define it in a modular way uh, are definitely a couple of pluses. So um, already in, in the consortium, we do have uh, dual degrees in, in the master for HPC and, and, and so on. But the, the idea here is really to bring the, the community together start defining the, the standards, start thinking about the new generation of users. Uh, I'm, I'm also thinking about uh, historians, economists, many other people start uh, uh, paying interest uh, in HPC and, and this is kind of our, our duty. Uh, and, and you're very right when saying that uh, when we meet people outside of our community, they don't even know what are these three letters, HPC. And uh, while at the same time, and, and this is also a challenge, I believe, for, for your HPC. This is strategic um, effort from Europe to go in that direction because we believe that it's a way also to, to boost the economy and to boost from the scientific world the, the research, the excellence in research and, and knowledge. So that's, that's really the, the joint effort, and this is the way I see it. I don't see this as uh, the master from the eight awarding universities. I see this as the European master and, and we are just trying to, yeah, push forward this ID. Thank you. Uh, anything to add from the other panel members? Yeah, maybe I can add. Uh, I think this is really the, the, the thing we have to achieve, that we kind of push the limits uh, beyond the regular academic uh, master programs and really try to include supercomputing centers and include industry, uh, make new uh, possibilities ranging from summer schools, internships and so on that can be directly included in the European master program. And of course, we do this on a European level uh, together. And I think this adds some real benefit for the uh, students. Yeah. Thank you. And now I hear the students needs and perspective has been already mentioned in a few of these comments and I would like to follow up a bit on this with a, perhaps a, a question to our representative of the industry from E4, Fabrizio. So for students certainly an important question is the career perspective when they sign up to a master program. Now can you explain us why would a corporate such as E4 recruit a graduate from this master program. And does this master program, in your opinion, provide specific skills that are particularly valuable for the HPC industry that would give them a competitive advantage over graduates from other academic programs? Uh, thanks a lot for the, for the questions. Uh, I read uh, uh, two questions in your words. Uh, why uh, the first one is while uh, a corporation like an SME, let's say, uh, like E4 would uh, hire uh, a graduate out of this master, and the second is uh, what kind of the added value. Uh, the first one is uh, the fact that uh, more and more in the future we will SMEs must hire people with uh, uh, multidisciplinary skills. Having just one vertical scale is not anymore enough to stay competitive in the market. 
I think that the added value of this mask, mark, um, master is the fact that uh, it will provide a set of uh, uh, scales uh, which will cover several different areas uh, with some specialization, vertical specialization in uh, a specific segment of the uh, of the market uh, that's a huge uh, added value uh, why we should uh, hire uh, a people coming from this master uh, honestly uh, we don't hire a master we hire people if people are coming from the master is better than people coming from a different formation it's fine with us honestly but i'm sure that uh, the master will deliver to the uh, students, to the people, the right scale, which uh, will make uh, them uh, more suitable for uh, entering uh, an organization, be it a small uh, or medium enterprise or a large organization. And I'm glad the fact that uh, Leonardo is my counterpart, quote unquote, of course, uh, in this uh, initiative, uh, because we will have uh, the both uh, uh, areas, the large corporate with uh, hundreds of people in staff and a small company requiring uh, scales. Uh, and uh, we will try to maximize both uh, uh, scales uh, and select the right people for the right scales uh, for the right job. Now, if I pass this on to our academic partners in a very similar way, if we look at the most prominent European universities, those have a long tradition, a long history of academic excellence. Now, how do you see the, the master program within the competitive landscape of other university programs from an academic perspective? For example, when you look for PhD students in your HPC teams, when you recruit for academic positions, professors, postdocs, would you consider what are the advantages of attending or graduating from this international interdisciplinary and modular master program? Okay, they passed me the microphone, <laughs> but I didn't ask for it. <laughs> uh, in, in fact, that uh, what I see is that um, uh, if I've well understood, uh, you are asking me about uh, quality guarantees of the master in comparison with other masters, right? Uh, in my opinion, the master that we are delivering would be at least same quality than uh, the existing uh, ones. And with respect to um, departments that uh, in the research, they need uh, students prepared uh, to use HPC, either to use HPC or more in the core HPC area uh, to be able to be HPC architects, then our students will be in clear advantage with respect to, for example, computer science students. So I don't see any inconvenience. I, I only see advantages for a student uh, to, fo to, to follow this, this master. I, I hope that this is this answers your, your question. Yeah, may, maybe I, yeah, I, I fully agree. So I think exactly this is what you mentioned, these roles that we have defined. So HPC uh, user, HPC administrator, and so on, developer. I think there are no really focused master programs on that so far, and this is what we, of course, intend to deliver. Of course, there are other programs in this area, I would say, from computer science to computational science and engineering that have a lot of uh, different yeah, focus, and a lot of universities offer these programs, of course, also we. Um, but I think this specific, um, yeah, focus on HPC is something that we can add. And of course, in general, master programs should add a very specific education in some area. Okay. So if just uh, I may add uh, a bit uh, on this. Um, at the University of Luxembourg, uh, majority of our students are, are from abroad. So uh, if I believe in computer science, something like one third of the students coming from the Grand Legion one third from Europe and one third from uh, abroad Europe. 
um, it's it's always a, a challenge to uh, to make people come and integrate and uh, and, and so on. It's also um, uh, let's say uh, richness to have a diversity of, of culture and uh, and uh, all of these. What I believe is that the, the fact of having some kind of standardization of the studies and standardization of the field will help also to boost a bit the integration, meaning that when we have a PhD student coming from this um, joint master, uh, we already know what is uh, known and what is, what is not known. What I also expect is because there will be a mobility across Europe, the, the people will already arrive with a multicultural way of, uh, of thinking. And um, uh, last but not least, uh, so the, 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 the fact that uh, these people will also have this uh, link with industry. Nowadays we, we talk more and more about, a few years ago we were talking about excellence in science as a goal per se. Now we, we talk also about research with impact and, and being able to work with people from, from industry, being, being to work with people from the supercomputing centers will also help steering the research in a in more precise way, so that we know that we will have an uh, impact. Yeah, if I now can answer with a different hat from yeah, an, a, academia and also from one of the uh, centers of excellence for HPC, where we really struggle to hire people. Um, I think we, we are very interested in the tele technical skills, but I think I'm at least uh, also very much looking for people who are uh, being uh, have full promise to work independently, to, to be, even for PhD, who are curious, who are uh, open-minded, who are critical towards their own work. Uh, and, and that's something that you really acquire by being exposed, first of all, to some inclusiveness, <laughs> and also, so super nerds who live in their own world are not always the best choice, at least in my teams. And second, uh, I think it's, uh, it's very much being exposed to a variety of uh, interactions and opportunities. And also, I hope, to interactions among students, not just interactions with the people who teach to them. And that component, I think you have now an opportunity of a relatively small but critical mass to get people interact among themselves, get organized, critical. I hope this is going to be one of the focus points. If I may add, uh, not only interaction between students uh, and the teacher, but also interaction of the whole ecosystem, uh, including industries. Uh, I contacted uh, several members of ETP, industrial members, I mean, and all of them uh, enthusiastically agreed in accepting uh, the, the people coming out of, of the master in their companies uh, to make uh, stage, uh, tutorial, whatever. Because we want uh, these people to learn how to be successful inside the company, delivering uh, not uh, scientific, quote unquote, results, but real added value to their company and to the European ecosystem. So let's make this uh, uh, virtuous cycle uh, work, uh, teaching, uh, industries, uh, market, uh, that's the only way uh, we can uh, uh, act to be successful in Europe. We have the smarter people, we have the right organization, we have the right framework, which is the EU master, let's make it work. Industries are here to support and to enhance the value of this master. Thank you very much. I think that was a very clear message to uh, to students, potential students that may be interested in this master program. Now, it has been mentioned a few times, uh, first of all, HPC is an interdisciplinary subject, uh, but also modularity and mobility was mentioned a few times. So what does this mean? Does this mean that every student will have the possibility to have a, an individual curriculum and will there be support to students to compose their individual curriculum in line with the requirements of the degree? Okay, <clears throat> modularity is one of the uh, keywords of the proposal. And I think that uh, 
being able to define individual uh, path for a student would be one extreme of the result, right? Uh, but so as to accomplish that, first we have to identify the right modules, uh, the size of the right modules that better fits the definition of student curriculum. Uh, we have to develop the materials, which is uh, very difficult if you want to do it uh, in a proper way. So my answer would be no, the very first day. But I think that the project will go more and more uh, to a modular definition, a modular sizing, and being able to adapt almost to individual students. And if not individual, at least the, okay, groups of students with similar interests. I don't know if uh, we can be so ambitious to pretend to identify individual. And in fact, maybe it's not so useful to build individual, individual uh, curriculums, but identify representative groups of students that can be served, definitely, I think, yes, we will progress, not the first day, but maybe at the end of the, of the project. Yeah, so, so in terms of, of mobility, mobility is planned, so that the students will spend the first year in uh, one of the institutions and the second year uh, in the second institution with possibility also to make a, the, the training uh, in, a, in a third place. Uh, they will be uh, supported also financially, so they, they, we plan uh, 5,000 uh, euros per year per student for, for this. We plan also to, uh, to mask the, the different tuition fees and, and to, to cover that uh, with, with the, the project. Uh, we plan to, to bring the students all together also to, to exchange during the, the summer schools and, and different activities. And I'm definitely looking forward also new ways of teaching. So uh, things like project-based learning where we could in, involve industry. We, we talk about uh, the fact of having uh, different professors from different institutions also working together, uh, providing, the idea also is that we like also to keep academic freedom for, for our colleagues. We don't need to just get the book and, and go page by page and, and so on, but we'll provide materials, we'll provide MOOCs, we'll provide uh, additional material uh, to support the, the colleagues to, to provide this uh, the teaching that we like to set up. So, thank you very much, and before we have to conclude this discussion. I would like to give Vit Vondrak the opportunity to comment on this. Vit is a mem the representative of Czech Republic in our governing board and was a driving force to in the pro preparation of this initiative. So, we're looking forward to hear your, your opinion. It's quite dark here, so it's not, not so easy to, to walk on the stairs. So uh, thank you very much for the presentation. So uh, maybe I have a comment and maybe a question, last question, uh, because uh, I would go a little bit beyond this project, uh, let's say, because I think uh, this is, as was already mentioned, this is the pilot of the master. And uh, for me, actually, it, uh, uh, it raises the question, what will be just after the project? What will be a really success? What we would, uh, what we can expect from uh, from uh, from this project, from from this uh, master study program? Because I personally expect that uh, it might, uh, let's say, improve the the let's say um, uh, quality of the HPC education. Uh, I would also expect that maybe uh, it will be more countries with the um, with the access to the to this quality HPC HPC education and so on. That's uh, I from at least from my point of view uh, one of the really um, main objectives. And my question is maybe to <laughs> to uh, representatives of the of the awarding university how they see what will be just uh, after after uh, this project as the next step. Yeah, thanks for the question. So, of course, we have already addressed that uh, uh, and thought about that, and we have a lot of also contributing universities in our uh, project. So that means these are universities that, of course, in future can and should also become awarding universities. So we follow, so to say, an open strategy when 
we define the curriculum, we will already include other universities, of course, and also industry, supercomputing centers, uh, in order to get a really yeah, kind of broad consensus on what is HPC and what should we teach um, and how we define the curriculum. So you want to add something? In, mm, all in all, uh, uh, the success will be if we are able to implement a good uh, master and then if uh, we have succeed in mobilizing, mm, mm, adding a lot of people, adding a lot of universities uh, to the objective of uh, doing his version, his own version of the master because not all the masters have to be the same each university that uh, takes some or, or completely uh, the materials and the proposal that we issue uh, can make their, their interpretation and take advantage of their own characteristics to um, expand that kind of uh, studies all over Europe. I think that that would be a measurable success. How many universities that nowadays do not have a master in, in HPC, uh, start doing it from our work, and how many uh, universities working in uh, other disciplines, maths, physics, and biology, life sciences, take one of the modules or um, the number of modules they consider they need uh, to train in HPC their, their people. Thank you, and for the last, Contribution, Fabrizio. Um, th thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, I understand that, that uh, the first round of uh, the master is uh, towards young people. I would really appreciate if the second uh, round, the follow-on, uh, will target also existing employees uh, of the companies. Th that's important because we know that after three or four years of uh, a people out of university goes to work, uh, if it is not trained, is lost. So we have to put into this program also a consistent plan to train uh, on a certain basis uh, people already working in companies. I think this is the key. So first wave, test it. Second wave, also the people in companies, uh, and then a cyclic training for all the people. In this way, we will have a, a, a healthy structure because the old people, quote unquote, old people, train also the new people with uh, the tacit uh, knowledge that Jean-Philippe has been mentioning. We are a value. We all, this, this room has a value in this. And we want to put this value uh, at the service of the young generation, but without losing the existing employees. Okay, thank you very much. And I see there are many ideas how to better link academic excellence and industrial innovation. Thank you very much for participating in this discussion. Thank you for listening. And with this, I would like to conclude this session.